Do we have a scribe or do we care? Okay. <laughs> or do we care? Yeah. This no meeting just never happened. <laughs> <laughs> it is a video. You, you can pass anything you want. Right? <laughs> as long as we report consensus points, I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. yeah. Do well, it's on video, so. So they can tell that we only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven people here. But we all just sit like in this front row. And I say let's just make moderator the entire moderation team. Or sorry, uh, facilitation team for the night. You gotta deal with it all. Think of the power. <laughs> uh, I'm not okay with that. I don't that mind statement. taking stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind taking stuff. I'm willing to do that. Uh, uh, I'm going to do uh, 10, even though I've never been trained and you tend to suck at it. Why don't why don't we go around and kind of think uh, what what we think might be a problem with the GA? What what would turn people off from coming? I'll be the first to start. I think long meeting times people don't want to come out for five hour meetings, and we should keep try to keep under under two. But uh, I don't know. Anyone else have any ideas about improving GAs? Show up to the work group meetings where everyone gets along and let GA 
Personally, I definitely I agree on the uh, back and forth nature, but part of what I see is a lot of frustration building up uh, during meetings because people try to make comments when it's question time and questions when it's comment time, and I almost feel like they feel like they're getting up hamstrung in it and what they want to say when they want to say it so they have to reorganize what they're saying to make it fit and then people will be a point of order that's a comment kind of thing so uh, one thing I honestly think would fix some of that problem is just to have uh, I don't want to use the uh, term comment time because people have flat out told me they will slit their wrists if they have to deal with the quamet time. But something along those lines, we can name it, I don't know, Jim Dandy time. I could care less. But let's get away from the comment question separation and just let people flow. Which would be a deregulator. Oh, sorry. Done. It's just part of a bunch of things. Um, I think our location hinders us a little bit. I think there's just people that just don't want to get out here. I think if we were in the center of the city, I think it would make a difference. I think a, the biggest major problem is uh, we need to make GA seem relevant. It doesn't seem very relevant right now. I don't know why I'm here right now. Other than I guess to talk about why GA doesn't seem relevant which is an important discussion to have. Um, and maybe it's not relevant. Um, they get, you know, it's an awesome thing when you're in a little community and everyone's there every day. And there's like, then GA seems to have a purpose because it's talking about your community and like things that come up. But like, when we're, because I think we've been doing awesome with work groups lately. We've been getting tons of stuff done, getting lots of people to come out to work group meetings. But and if people will come to them because there's a purpose. <laughs> like, and then we come here and we just, I don't know, talk about. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, Would you say it turns to a circle jerk? <coughs> <laughs> but, yeah, uh, there's some thoughts. Well, I think that's what. Can this? Can. Well, if someone would appoint himself to be consistently vehement and disagreeable at every meeting, then at the meeting where the agenda item is what to do about the person who's consistently vehement and disagreeable is on the agenda, you might get a larger crowd for that particular meeting. I disagree. I saw you wink. <laughs> no, but I was going to say, as far as what we talk about in GA, um, there's been a, it's been steadily evolving to this point, and as far as I can tell, since we started meeting here in January, it's been this way. We talk about what proposals come to us. Um, very rarely do we have a broader agenda point with a more free form type of conversation or something where we do breakout groups, um, where, which is a really good exercise in conversing because it lends to everyone actually participating. Um, people have different personalities, like a lot of the time GA will be the same 10 to 15 voices. Um, that's a problem we need to figure out. I don't know how to figure that out because I'm comfortable speaking and speaking and speaking too much. <laughs> um, but I think it is a problem that we spend so much time on proposals or endorsements that, you know, I don't know how to fix that. Um, rather than having agenda points that everyone wants to talk about. Um, and figuring out those because <coughs> if everybody wants to talk about a particular thing, 
then they're more likely to put up through some of the stressful parts. You know, if, if stuff's getting heated about a proposal you really didn't care about to begin with, well, why would you stick around? Why? Um, for my part, I mean, I've already talked about reasons that I think GA isn't very relevant anymore, but I think we're entirely too formal um, for what we actually do. I don't think endorsements are a big deal. They don't accomplish much, and that's a lot of what we either, we either focus on procedural stuff or endorsing what other people are actually doing. We don't ourselves really do anything. When we had a purpose, was when we had an occupation to govern. That's what we were doing. We were, we were self-governing the occupation. And the general assembly made sense. But now it just it doesn't make sense. It, make, it seems like a better use of my time to go to a work group meeting where we're actually going to accomplish something than go to GA to tell people about it. Hmm. I was just going to say that's why the spokes come to model makes a lot more sense. It's not even, you know, exclusive in the sense that it's, it could just be occupiers. It's no longer about just trying to convince people to come out and identify as occupiers or be a part of general assembly, because there's a lot of people doing other things who haven't, were never really, you know, identified as occupiers that we should be communicating with in the city on a regular basis. So we should be thinking about how we can sort of help develop that form and make that happen. facilitation team working group that like really works on making the GA something interesting and valuable to come to. Like that really has an agenda for each week. And like their job is to work on that agenda. Out outreach to other working groups about why they might want to come to GA um, or what they're bringing to GA and why it's important. Maybe we shouldn't focus so much on scheduling, but like, we only have a general assembly when it's relevant. You know? and there's stuff to talk about, stuff to push through. Only have GA, and if that means one week we have one, and the next two we don't, that's fine. You know, only make a general assembly and then a facilitation meeting and all that mess whenever like there's actually stuff that needs to be talked about, and then like it becomes less. It's just it's a weird formality. If it doesn't mean anything. Let's not do it even once a week. You know, but there's no point. Then don't. assembly when there's something to be discussed, something to do. That gets really confusing for those of us who don't necessarily have a reliable public transport and have schedules that sometimes are priority for planning. Um, and yeah, I need to know when something's going to happen, preferably at least a week before it happens. And having GAs just, oh, Tuesday. And we'd be like, well, I have plans for Tuesday. Can't go. Versus if I know every Tuesday I have to set aside that block of time, it's a lot easier to plan for. I also think that it doesn't us getting together doesn't have to be a general assembly and it doesn't have to be taking care of business. I think there's a lot of value in like people have been bringing food to general assemblies. People want to hang out in there and chill more and just chill than take care of the meager business that we have to perform that's always excruciating to do anyway. Or that we don't have. <laughs> yeah. Endorsements and like procedural things about how we make you do it. Yeah, the, the proposals that we're dealing with are not substantive. So I would, I think that if we're all out doing our own things or working in the groups that we want to work with, there's great value, and I think other people would see great value in maybe having a pop <coughs> and just socializing with each other. 
but I don't think they want to come here and be grind the wheels with a lot of business that they it doesn't affect whether what they care about gets accomplished or not. Well, maybe one way I'm just going to bounce off of you. What if we try having a potluck uh, and you know a minimal GA uh, where if you're bringing something to this meeting, you have to have submitted it X time in advance. And it's, uh, I want to get on the uh, agenda for this. And give facilitation the ability uh, for this one time deal of trying it out, the power to uh, um, prioritize. And then just put a time limit that we can extend if we choose to, but uh, if we don't get to it, we don't get to it. Because I'm hearing, you know, times an uh, issue, we get bored, we get annoyed, we want to leave. I'm hearing uh, we uh, want to have more fun and less uh, pain, and I, I look at the uh, GAs as pain nine times out of ten. Does this sound like something people like or dislike? Can I get a temp from people? I like it. Okay. Like that, um, we'll go ahead and ask you if you have before I... Yeah, I guess um, I'm against it because although I, like, I really like most of the idea, I feel like the part about Asking people to submit what they'd like to talk about to a facilitation team is a problem. Like the process of prioritizing those things, um, it sounds a lot like the cocoa process we implemented in January. That I think honestly has been counterproductive to what I was speaking about earlier in regards to how we could use consensus actually are like a bit better by determining the topics of conversation as a group. Um, and yeah, everybody might have something to either A, get off their chest, or B, promote. But there are, and those might be at the top of their thoughts, but there are things that we all want to talk about. And we'll only figure out those things through fluid conversations. We're at, I think that's where we're at right now. Um, that's, and that that process makes it a little more formal than I think it could be. I don't think you're saying like this to develop a system like that. So like the minimal GA, like they have to have a potluck and if you have something you want to talk about with everybody, we'll be time for it. Yeah. We could still have an announcement time. Yeah. You show around with announcements where you just like say what you do. <clears throat> and, like, yeah, people can talk to you afterwards. You don't have to get to do long out discussions that lead to all this internal conflict necessarily. Sounds like a conversational pop up. Yep. So the proposal is to turn GAs into conversational <laughs> pop ups. <laughs> <laughs> small, but ideally we should get to a point where we can have a conversation and have a natural, if there's an air in the room that says this is what people are looking at and we all agree on it, go propose it and test for consensus. Where? You know, we're going to get to this anyway. So Just take... for the last
last couple of Thursdays. Is that GA about turning? Turning Thursday GA into a conversational assembly of some sort, and somebody suggested potluck as part of that. I think the overall idea was to make things more loose. So, like, we can just have these conversations. I think in the spirit of that, we should, <laughs> we should test now for consensus. Like, fuck the announcements, proposals. Like, this is a proposal that everyone in this room agrees on. Like, I, I'm okay with that. Uh, any objections, can I check? Yes. I, I have our moderator left. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying you want to implement this for Thursdays? Are you saying you want to implement this for Thursdays and Sundays? Or are you saying that we only do this one day a week? And that's and this is what we're implementing. One day a week makes a lot of sense. What do we say? I, I, yeah, that, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I, I think originally the proposal started as making Thursdays G just the, uh, the lax non decision making body and then keeping Sunday as the only like decision making body. But it can, it can change, change to however the people in the okay. streets want it to sound the best. I know that uh, I'm probably the only one who has a problem with Thursdays. You, you will rarely ever see me here for Thursdays because um, my best friend since elementary school, that's our day to hang out is Thursday nights. We go to rural old times, have some drinks. So uh, I like the idea. Is there any way we can <laughs> I'm fine with the name of Thursday. I'm point of information for Harry. I've never come to Thursday GAs because it's the only night of the week I work on, I work at. Um, but I, it's in the best interest of the group. Like, I, I really think that. That's why, even if it's Thursdays, I'm in favor of it. Well, that's what I'm saying is that a date that we have to have. Sorry, man. Sorry, it was supposed to be rotating days and places, with Sunday being a set day. And then the weekday GAs were supposed to change, so people with the schedules that would be able to, to come on different days, we would see more faces. Um, so, I mean, if we have some sort of, we can alternate days. Wednesday, like Thursday, or something. Yeah. We're going to have our nice little Pablo conversation piece on Sundays. And here you go. Well, I mean, is, I'm just throwing this out there to see what people think. Maybe next week, so people like Isaac and myself can come. Are people interested in perhaps a Wednesday hot luck treat? I'm just trying to progress. I picked up the dinner shift for Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, it's funny because um, you were talking earlier how it's like difficult. It's easy to set aside time, but if, if there's any sort of change, well, yeah, it's, change to that schedule, it makes it hard. So yeah. there's an example. I mean, I think um, whether we keep Thursdays and Sundays for now or switch it up, it doesn't doesn't truly matter. You know, I'm of the opinion that Sunday GA should be wiped and we should be meeting on Saturday at noon in a public space in the city, no matter how cold it is. Um, that's just my opinion. I like the idea of going down to one a week and maybe even switching Saturdays and Sundays or something. Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. Have a nice little informal uh, conversation piece. Okay. You know, Sundays seem to be everybody's free on Sundays, right? Okay. Sundays have been good. Sunday has been good. Yeah, Sunday, yeah exactly. Are Thursday people, doesn't. Thursday doesn't work. Are people yeah. just talking? Yeah. Pretty much. I wanted to start the Finnegan group on Sunday just. Before. How do I get to know if the Quakers will allow 
all you did to come at four. Do you know about me? I think you can come at four. Again? Oh, yeah, right. Thanks. Mm-hmm. We just have to make sure that someone unlocks the doors. Mm-hmm. I have a uh, combination skip to it. But, um, do anybody have any like, objections to making Sunday the public conversation piece? So you're asking to, this coming Sunday, let's change the format uh, and do a potluck GA of sorts. I'm asking. We're not allowed to make that decision right now? Well, personally, I wouldn't feel comfortable changing the entire structure of our organization with so few people in the room. However, how many GAs has it been? Where it's been this few, many people in the room, like <laughs> at a certain point. We'll see what happens next Sunday, and then things like, all right. Because I don't think people care too much. You're saying. Go ahead, I have always felt that whoever shows up is the organization. That's what it's been from the beginning, and so <coughs> I mean, there are clearly other people organizing in other ways. And if we have a spokes council, they might show up in those ways. But if we're the people who are in the room, we get to make the decisions. And I think that's an incentive to show up if you want to be a part of the decision-making process. And also just a truth of, of the matter. You know, is that if we're the ones in the room, then, then we get to steer the direction the organization goes. As, lo- as long as it's publicized, you know, and, and people, and it's open, and people could be there. Uh, if we're contemplating a major uh, change, uh, it would be good to let people know ahead of time that we're contemplating this so they can show up for the discussion. drastically change the way that we're doing things. So please come to, you know, Thursday, Thursday's meeting or next Sunday's meeting. I don't, I don't know what we want to decide right now, but come to this meeting in particular if you're interested in this because we're going we're gonna to to, we're gonna try to make a decision about the future of GAs at this next GA. But I also agree with what you're saying. I mean, people know they come to GA if they want to be involved in decision making, so we're all here. <laughs> but so many are not here. Mm-hmm. And I so missed them. Uh-huh. You guys just left. Where are they? I want staff to. Okay. <laughs> I mean, well, Jeremy, I. Looking around, like just having a real conversation, you should be part of this. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I yeah, I, I'm not form. I'm just all yeah, like yeah, so exactly. Hands are going up the same I'm time. just so I'm just voicing my opinion <clears throat> that when we have a group like we have to use our common sense, like and stay fluid. And it, I'm sorry if it's not in process, but the facilitation team exists to. Um, facilitate a, sort of like a debate where people are going to disagree or need to like really wait or this group is obviously more than capable of having a good fluid conversation right. we can and, moderate ourselves. Yeah. We're to <coughs> and all of that is to me fitting in with the spirit of consensus that we use to make decisions um, I know we have a process and I'll, in the same turn to me, the, the spirit of what we're talking about, or I feel like 11 people is enough to make a decision about loosening GA, about changing this, how many how many times we do it. You know, I feel like it's a very common sense thing to look around this room, hear people's concerns, and to we all have had experience watching people walk away from this, and we know why they leave, and sometimes we don't, and that's even scarier to me. Um, 
And I think that we should trust ourselves to look out as the people who are coming. Trust ourselves to make a decision that after, converse, after talking about it and really thinking about it, it's in the best interest of everyone who has been involved with the General Assembly and Occupy Richmond. And I think the idea to loosen it and make it more of a conversation, less of a headache, a process, um, we'd be like contradicting ourselves if we didn't feel comfortable making that decision with with this, in these circumstances. Also, any decision that we make can be reversed by any future GA. So it's not, it's not a, it's not going to be Thank you. Yay, just one question. So what do we want to accomplish then? Does somebody want to make a proposal for? Talk about it over dinner on Thursday. Thursday's GA and make next Sunday's GA a potluck conversation and emphasize that gives us a week to get the word out and th that conversation be the con you know the conversation we all want to have a potluck conversation about making our GAs about a potluck conversation <laughs> <laughs> it's very close moderns <laughs> no I like that just, just saying, like, GA for Thursday is canceled, and GA for Sunday will be a potluck conversation. If you can't deal with that, don't come. <laughs> just come and hang out. Sit, say what it is, you know? We're going to come and hang out. Shit needs to get done. Stuff needs to get done, and we'll do it. What about, what about saying it in this, like, not making a decision in the sense of, like, radically changing the format forever? But the phrasing in the sense, I like the idea of canceling GA on Thursday and saying we're going to have a potluck conversation in the format that is kind of coming up as a part of the discussion we're doing. Gather, announce, share, discuss, and at the end of the night there will be a proposal that says, did this work? Was this, was this a good way? Does this feel like a more useful GA format? than others, and then if we agree, we can say, all right, from here on out, or until we change it again, this is what we're going to do. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Kind of like a test, and like bill it, like as we tell our friends, tell other members, saying we're going to have a test GA in this model, in a spokes council potluck style conversation based GA format model, and if it works well for us, we can all agree to just go on that way, and if it doesn't, then we haven't changed things, ultimately. That was just the test run. Beta testing, basically. Right. I like it. So let's have a chill se sesh on Sunday and see what happens. Can we get a double check on this? Let's go. Um, can I just clarify the okay. sense of the body on this? Are we saying that our official proceedings are going to be this conversational thing and we're going to make decisions in that? Or are we saying that we're not going to worry about making decisions unless we actually convene a GA at one of these things in order, in order to do so by the book? Yeah. Is, it, is it more the latter or more the former? Latter. I mean, I mean, we're do, do you understand the distinction we're making? Yeah. So if we need to make decisions, somebody comes with something that everybody needs to hear, we form up, vote, you know, do our thing. If not, we just chill. Yeah. Because uh -huh. I think the social thing is most important at this point. Just keeping us together is way more important than making some formal decision. Because if it's not relevant, it's not relevant. Like I said. We're not doing anything. I can foresee being the issue is that if we is is using the Facebook page for events. So how do we 
in this format, endorse events, or, and the two versions I see is one, we maintain a do an endorsement process as a part of these conversations, but aside from like endorsing events, not plan to make any serious decisions about directionality or anything, but it'd be more of an info form each other, what our direct, my direction is this, this group's direction is this, and if you guys wanna jump on board, sweet, but we're not gonna like try and pretend like we wanna waste 30 hours of our time over the next two weeks trying to figure out what our direction is. Um, I mean, I think that's a good idea, but it clearly was a waste of time <laughs> when we tried to do that for a while. And, um, and um, or the other process would be to say, let's open the Facebook page back up and, and like, you know, and just, you know, if, it, if, it's a, if it's a group that's a part of the GA, they can post that page essentially. I think Isaac was. I, I have a direct there. response. <laughs> <laughs> I think that my personal opinion is that we should trust the media team to release what they want. Everyone on media team should understand that they're going to get crap from people. And that if you actually, like, well, just because that's how, that's what happens. But media team, we should trust media team to release what they want, and if you really have a problem with like how that's happening, join media team. That's always been the <laughs> that's yeah, the the order of media, control. Media team was forced, basically, like bullied by by people's criticisms of their work, like to create this process of endorsements. Am I correct? Or, 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 or. <laughs> and that's why, like. I spent a weekend writing a program <laughs> that could just take it out of our hands, right? Mm -hmm. Now we just push a button instead of having to like figure out, okay, where do we post this stuff, you know? Great. Yeah, I, I support that. I, I think the, the way that we can now submit events to the website has like, again, maybe for me, it, it, it the relevancy of the general, it's, the general yeah. assembly is re relevant because I kind of don't, in some instances, don't care if the event's endorsed by the GA. So I can go to the website and I can go, I'm having a direct action meeting at this time. It was called by me, I'm in action. It's not endorsed by the GA, I can check that box, I don't care. Like, it's at this time. It's on our website. Like, everyone from Occupy can see that and they can come to it and they can know. Oh, Brandon, you didn't get that meeting endorsed, but it's still a meeting and it's still happening and it's still about these things. Like, and it's the same way with if Direct Action comes up with an event, we, I don't have to, I can still post my event on the Occupy website like, without endorsement. It'll say it wasn't endorsed, but it, it'll say Action Work Group came up with this event, it's at this time, it's at this place. So I think we've taken a lot of that pressure off of media with that form, because it's the individual that goes there to post an event in words in a particular way. And I think there, I mean, there are probably, yeah, there's definitely instances where I guess endorsement is a powerful, more important thing. agree with that. Um, I wanted to share something that I saw today that was posted on two different event pages. Um, by the Occupy Richmond Facebook user. By the Occupy Richmond Facebook user. It says, uh, this was on an event that they're calling um, an equality rally of some sort at VCU. And Occupy Richmond said, Thanks for the invite, but my attendance would require an endorsement by the GA of Occupy Richmond. The only time such an endorsement could occur between now and Tuesday, because I guess the event is on Tuesday, would be, and it listed this date and this time and this address. Though no one has mentioned proposing such an endorsement as of yet, of course anyone could show up and propose such an endorsement. And in quotation, uh, in, uh, yeah, it says, much care was taken to write this post without pronouns. 
due to lack of clarity of what pronoun is the most accurate. That was on one event. And then the other event said, thanks for the invite, but my attendance is dependent upon an endorsement at a general assembly between now and then. So I was quite upset and in a, I, did, I just thought that was completely disrespectful. <laughs> And we, we don't really know who did it, but... Can, can you be clear with everybody about what you find objectionable about it? I'm confused about what you're yeah, talking well, about. What's going on. Yeah, I'm confused I don't understand well. why it wound up on two event pa pages of events that we would... We don't need to endorse, first of all. They weren't asking for our endorsement. They weren't, I mean, they're VCU students having an event. Yeah. And they, they invited Occupy Richmond. Occupy Richmond doesn't need to post on, on their event page that this needs to get endorsed and then use this pronoun language. I get a question. Yeah. Is this like the Occupy Richmond Facebook page that is used the most or the Occupy Richmond Facebook page that is like the rogue? It's the one that's a person. Yeah, the one that endorses it's like, like a Ron Paul and Nirvana. No. That one? No, I'm talking about another page, but there is one that's. Yeah, the person the per is not a group. It's set up as a person. And it's got the OCC UPY. It's set up as a person? Yeah, it's, in a, it's got an account that's not a group account. It's like as if you would set up your own personal account. It's a user yeah, account. And you can now bring them as your friend. And that's what this was. The official Occupy Richmond Facebook presence is the page about the community organization Occupy Richmond. Is it leaks there are an account? account? It is, because um, the user account is an admin for that page, as well as uh, Josh, Mark, yeah. and somebody else. So basically the person who posted this is like a member of our media team who's a Facebook administrator? Good question. I don't know. I didn't our, policy, question. our policy is that when you post things to Facebook, you're supposed to sign it with your initials. This was yeah. not signed. Yeah. But it I was, brought this up because you mentioned opening it to the public and this had just happened like 13 hours. Event. Like yesterday. Yeah. It could be really so. all I know. Well, this, 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 wasn't our, but this wasn't our page then. But this that's was, true. This was the, the personal account which has like, I don't know who it is. So that account has even people like, at, unless they've been deleted, it has Alexandria Vasquez and uh, Megan Neal, I think. And uh, there's, there's like a number of people who aren't media related at all who've been on that count, account at one point. Have the comments been erased? I would just like to note that it's like not worth listing the names as much as it is knowing like how many people would have access to it. Because listing the names, it just it sounds like speculation or something, even though I know it's not. Yeah, no, I'm not at all saying it's any of those people. My yeah. point is simply that, that it is true that at least that, that account, the personal account, has been people who are not even in Occupy anymore have had access to that and may still have access to And that, that means they have the password. <laughs> they use the Occupy Richmond email address associated with that user account. Exactly. And they have the password. Exactly. So all we would have to do is change the password. Right. Might I suggest that media team and at the next convenience have a discussion about changing said password. Yeah. It's coming up, believe me. We've already started talking about it. Okay. Because that, that stuff is weird. Yeah. yeah. That is, it's, and it's makes loaded. us look Oh, okay, so this looks yeah, absolutely. Well, there's um, no access going on to that user account in the first place yeah. at all. Yeah, and uh, to say my attendance, like, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's really, the only reason for having that user account is so the event app has needs an account to log in and post stuff to. Other than that, we could like wipe it of any sort of branding and information, and it'd probably be a good idea. <clears throat> Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <coughs> I didn't mean to like stop what we were talking about, but I was like, it just yeah. kind of went through. What was the other pronoun thing? You know? Like what, he, she, it? Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Wait, what was that referring to? Like, I think the gender language issue of like three months ago. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was, yeah, yeah. It was, it was mocking that. Oh, yeah, it's mocking that? Yeah. yeah or is that totally, serious? Yeah, oh. it's, yeah, it's it, totally mocking it. it Sounds like oh, it's okay. Oh, serious. No, it's, it's, it's much care was taken to write this with this page without pronouns. Due to the lack of clarity, what pronoun is the most accurate? Names come to mind. It's 
So I, I agree with Isaac personally that, uh, that I'd love to just hand power over those things back to media and take the restrictions off. I personally thought they were kind of dumb from the beginning. Can I motion for a form, a form of a proposal that we can sense upon that? You move, you don't move. Then we test for consensus. Can I sure. move? Can I move to, um, you know, or, make what was to, make, to make that a thing? <laughs> so Isaac proposes that media be trusted to post what they like and see relevant. And if, you know, and if there are, well, it's not, it doesn't need to be part of the proposal that media be trusted to um, post uh, events and news articles and whatever content they feel is appropriate. Um, does this route around the rules we have about what gets to be posted to Facebook and what doesn't based on whether it has consensus or not? Is that the idea? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I think that would, I think that kind of flexibility would be better because there's, frankly, there's events that don't have GA consensus that should be on the Facebook page. There's no reason why they shouldn't be on the Facebook page. Yeah. That would also allow work groups to make an event and not have to get full consensus to announce it. I would, the one thing I would add is I think it could be good to have like a set of four or five general guidelines that would be suggested for how a group is proposed. Because one thing that I don't want is personal rants of individuals on the Facebook page being posted under that name. So posting events, posting articles, posting infographics, posting updates, you know, like news stuff, but like working to be an unbiased news source an information source rather than a means for offering opinions. Although you could post a link to a blog, you know, or something that might have opinions associated with a particular member in the group, as long as the language in the post itself was was unbiased and, and kind of coming from a seemingly coming from the group rather than an individual. I'd love to see that kind of guideline, but other than that, full discretion for what gets posted. Yeah, we've actually talked about um, expanding the event application so that people could also submit like statuses and then we just approve them and they can go out to Twitter and Facebook. So like getting more, getting more, uh, not just on events, but also like, you know, wall posts, right? Like getting more input in there without giving everybody the keys to Facebook and also giving us a little bit of like editorial control. Because I don't think anybody's been posting shit on or something. I think if we're potentially moving towards this uh, spokes council model and giving more autonomy to work groups, the types of things we're talking about right now, if you're interested in them, you should be in the media work group. And media work group should be coming up with its own procedures and its own policies. And if you don't like them, join media and come in with your ideas about how you want to see those policies and procedures to be changed. I, go I, to the meeting that's about it and put your presents in. Sure, but yeah, get involved with that work group because we run direct action meetings potentially different every time we run them. Yeah, and that's because we have the autonomy to do that. And you know, it, media should be this. They can run their meetings how they want to run their meetings, and they can do their work the way they see yeah. fit to do their work. And anyone's allowed to join that group at any time if they think that that's just terribly wrong. I, or, you know, the same way that like, if you don't like the actions that you see happening, like come to direct action and make suggestion for an action and we'll help you make it happen. Oh. So I think, that, that's, that's my well, thought. What I would like to offer as a Compliments, not a contradiction, because I do agree with that, is that I think this kind of group, like the purpose of what a spokes council style GA would be, in addition for informing, 
is to allow for certain discussions to be among a larger group that would then inform smaller groups' work and around consensus-based ideas. So if we wanted to do a temp check and say, how do people feel about this, and it's clear there's an overwhelming desire that, that media put together a set of guidelines that by which they do this, then that's something that you know media would, would like not have to, you know, like they're autonomous, they can do what they want. But I think the value of group discussion is that then media would say, well, it's clear there's a lot of interest in this kind of a thing. Let's probably, you know, because we like that we want to be a part of this group, let's you know, put some energy into this kind of thing. So I agree that we shouldn't, we probably shouldn't like overhash discussions in large groups like this and like let the, the decisions themselves be made at the work group level because that's much more focused but still allow for discussion of this kind to take place and not assume that it should only take place in work groups. Yeah, I don't think that contradicts one. No, I don't think so either. Okay. Exactly, like, okay, this whole spokes council thing, you know, can you describe that exactly? Well, <laughs> It's, I think it's I think it's an idea that's that's a little in flux in a lot of different places, but the basic idea I think we've been talking about that draws from other models is that if you think about the hub being the GA meeting or the count the council meeting in a way, the spokes are all of the different um, working groups, all the or affinity groups, groups that are doing things and getting stuff actually done, coming together to share information and have discussion and inform that then goes back out to the spokes for what they're doing, but not under the assumption that everything has to come from the hub. It's not that decisions have to be made at the hub, it's more an opportunity to share information, gather support for ideas, basically by saying, not saying we need to consent on this so we all do this together, but hey, like we're doing this thing, if you like it, come with us, or if you like us, like it, show us, and if you don't like it, don't like it, show us that too. Let's get a temp check on this thing. But then that doesn't necessarily mean, even if the group doesn't like what I'm doing, I'm not bound to the group. Like the spokes council dissolves in a way the, the ability for the entire group to, to make the decisions for smaller bodies. It's more, it's more the, an idea that we trust each other to be doing good work. And if we want to be involved in that work, we'll join it. But also let people work autonomously as a loosely affiliated group rather than trying to be a homogenous body. Is that anything else want to... I have a Wikipedia entry up. I can read you what's on here. Spokes Council is a collection of affinity groups and clusters, a collection of affinity groups who meet together for a common purpose, often civil disobedience. Spokes is short for spokesperson, selected by each affinity group or cluster to represent them in the Spokes Council and they usually make decisions via a consensus decision-making process. So the idea, I think, uh, from what I've read, is that each of the groups doing stuff would send the person, and they would talk, and it would be open. So at any point, if that person they selected started going out of line from what represented their interests, they could pull them out. But it's just a way to reach consensus quicker without just a model of coordination. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So that would so that is a a consensus based decision making process, just with fewer bodies. Yeah. Just to lose your way there's recording. What? It would be more representative. Uh, that that model that to the T where he just defined yes. Yeah. And of course like you guys were saying, there's variations. Yeah. We modify it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Could we take a temp check just to see in this room of those two ideas what people are more interested in? Does that seem valuable? What are the two ideas? Which two? Uh, a spokes council that's based on a spokesperson, so still a decision making body, is what I heard, where in affinity groups send one person to, as a representative to a, a body that's making decisions together, or more of a affinity groups that aren't actually bound to each other, but are working together more and, and sharing information and ideas. That's how I would put it. Apparently that didn't go. Well, so, um, you don't have to, do we have to make a, does it have to be so formal? And then say, you know, we don't have to like, have a 
the spokesperson from each little work group to come, you know, like just have that group come and all the groups get together. And that's what the second. Right, that's that was. Oh, okay. <laughs> the second. That's the one. That's what I'm down for. Honestly, the way that the way that I've read about it playing out is that you can be involved, like in certain ones, like I think in New York, you could be in the spokes council representing just yourself, right? But the idea was that the people who actually had business tended to sort of elect somebody from their group to go represent that business just because it was quicker to get the consensus of the group. And it was sort of a fishbowl thing where, it, where people who wanted to watch it happen, watch it happen. And, they, and that would be a way to get an idea of, I, I, I sort of uh, 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 don't think it's necessarily about making decisions strictly, it's more about finding consensus. It's, I'm, I'm really starting to come back to this idea of formal decisions are less useful than figuring out what everybody else <coughs> is in favor of and not in favor of, and then governing your actions based on that. It's more of a way of temp checking things so that when you take action, you know exactly whether you got people behind it. That's a really good way to say it. That's a really good way to say it. So, is the representative um, format, would that um, give them the ability to, to stop a specific um, group from doing an action that they had planned just because of the, the voting I don't think process? You have, no? First of all, I don't think you have that power right now to stop anybody from taking an action. All you have the ability to do is to withhold this approval, right? This, right. this, this endorsement. That doesn't stop anybody, though. It that was a conversation. Yeah. Right, but the conversation isn't, it isn't, um, the conversation isn't necessary for them to do the action either. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? And like, it, that, that's a big problem. Sorry to monopolize here, but a big problem <laughs> with GA is that we think that what we say here is so important, in my opinion, instead of going out and doing things, yeah. like people will come here and say, oh, I want to do this. Well, that's great, but it never happens because you're more interested in talking about it and being heard than you are actually leading and getting people to like follow you by leading, by leading by example. And and one of the an organizer in town who's awesome. He's like our he's my age, 26 or so, and he's in charge of a, a really successful community organizing organization in Richmond that organizes um, churches uh, around social issues. And he says, he says that when I told him some of our problems with the amount of time it took stuff to get done in GA, he said, you want to know what I would suggest? And I said, sure. And he said, when people walk in the room and you start your meeting, make every single person go around the room and tell what they brought to the table today. As in, what work have I done since the last time I met? How many people have I brought to this organization? Or what money have I brought to this organization? What resources have I brought to the organization? If everybody does that and says, what have I got done? Then it becomes really clear who, who, who you should listen to in that meeting, essentially. <laughs> the people who are doing the work or the people who are showing up to try and direct things because they want to see things get done, but aren't willing to do the work themselves. And I think the cool thing about a spokes council format is that it's built around people doing work and then coming to a, the, a, a general meeting to share work that's being done and get, you know, get people behind that if possible and find support. But it's not built around like coming together to make decisions about work that should be done. Yes, but let's be clear. Um, that also, one of the things that we have been stressing from the very beginning is in making sure that all voices are heard. That's why we do modify consensus. This is moving away from that, in a way. He, he is definitely not a consensus-based organization that he runs. I'm not saying we should do it, I'm just offering... No, 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 I, yeah, yeah, I, I, feel, I, feel, I, feel, I just wanted to make a <laughs> finding a fact here. Yeah. I mean, that's just a good way to see, you know, who's worth listening to. Yeah, I mean... Again, in a sense, this is his language. I I just like to point out, Graham. I think you missed this volume two. Um, Brandon mentioned before <clears throat> you all arrived and how we started to talk about some of this was that GA feels irrelevant. I think that 
GA made, and hearing all voices really made sense when we were occupying the Manuel Plaza. And it really, really made sense when we were trying to rally an entire city to pick that action. And that we, <coughs> GA might serve us very well in the future if we discuss an occupation again. Um, and that it does feel irrelevant right now. And that the spokes council model feels really, really relevant. So I'm I'm all about trying the spokes council model. Could we perhaps do the community building exercise and spokes council okay. model both? Maybe keep the two GA a week thing just so that uh, we have some consistency for a while at least, <coughs> and also so that the spokes councils don't get bogged down. With so is what I'm hearing you want to have one event a week that's more community building general discussion based and then another that's more of a, a formal spokes council that could involve some decision making if that was merited by the way the group came together. I just like to point out when Jeremy said it really connected with me, not decision making, but spokes council would find consensus where needed in the meeting process. Um, and yeah, I think it'd still be cool to have a sort of conversational potluck sort of gathering to build our community in the meantime on another day of the week. I know this is totally irrelevant, but could we have like projects that brought us together, like going out and collecting trash in the back alleyway or helping with a potluck supper for the homeless? Yeah, I think with the spokes council model, you can kind of get people together for any kind of idea that, that you had that you wanted to get accomplished, and you could call yourself whatever kind of affinity group you wanted to be. We're the trash collectors or whatever and find the people that want to do that with you and then you guys can organize actions and come through the uh, spoke council model, the affinity group model to let everyone know what you're doing, get a little input if anyone has any kind of suggestions and recruit people who want to help you with it. So yeah, I think that would fit right into the whole affinity or the whole uh, spokes council model. Action the issue is that instead of you using GA as the first step to doing that, the first step is you do it and then you bring it to us. You see what I mean? As I'm opposed to you up. waiting for GA to give you people an interest, you lead the way and then come back to us and lead show us what you've done. Yeah. On your own? Or no, you we wait. With people who would like to call them and see what they want to do. And then okay. That becomes a group. You bring it to the spokes council and like, hey, this is what we did. Interested? Um, I'm not entirely clear about what is an affinity group. Specifically, if there's an activity that I want to join in, do I need to check beforehand whether the people who are in that have an affinity with me before I can join them in that activity? Um, well, first of all, the term affinity group has been abused by us because what it really is is a close network of people who have affinity with each other. Not who want to do a particular project necessarily, but who are tight-knit enough that they don't need to do formal procedural decision-making within their group. They can just do it. And they're on the same page enough that they don't have to constantly check for consensus because it, become, because it comes naturally. That was the idea in, like, for example, uh, Seattle 99, right? Is that you had these groups who came together and they were all interested in doing certain actions. And it was a way for them to coordinate all the actions that they were doing instead of all of them having to decide as a huge group, we're going to do this and we're going to do this. Well, I tell you what I'm doing so that you, I know that you're not going to conflict with me in some way. Um, I, I, I 
I get the sense that the kind of spokespeople that would be participating in the Spokes Council wouldn't necessarily be affinity groups in the sense of like identitarian groups, but more work groups, people working on a particular project. I don't think there's any problem with that. Um, and I think what you would see is people using Spokes Council meetings to announce ideas, to get people to meet with them at some other time and location and then come back with what they've worked on. Um, I don't think we have a lot of like true to form affinity groups here. And that's fine. That's not what we're doing. Um, my question really is, I have no way of knowing who feels an affinity with me, and so I have no way of knowing which groups I would be permitted to join if they're affinity groups. That's my question. What, what's happening right now is the word affinity group is being interchanged with working groups. Yes. Yeah. We already have working groups. We're kind of right now calling them affinity groups. Yes. But an affinity group is a working group. Working groups already exist. My working group gets along better or worse depending on who shows up for the night because we're not an affinity group. We're a working exactly. group and anyone. <laughs> Which is fine. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So is this an affinity group? Yeah. This is a it's a loose affinity group. Poorly it's in a GA. <coughs> I just like to add to that that we confuse, um, in my mind, affinity group and task force. Like a group of people working towards a one certain task, like F29, is, that's one task. It's going to be more or less done on M1. And that's not an affinity group. But. Well, if this makes more sense, um, affinity group is really the spoke in the spoke capital model. It's just a spoke. Does that make sense, everyone? Or a little thing. To have a spokes council meeting type setup, you really have to have more clearly defined groups than we have. Um, so that may be something we would have to work on to make this really work. Um, though, of course, we're changing the Spokes Council model to be less of a representative thing. So, uh, I think we're, we're working from scratch, sort of, with some ideas. We're taking the model, just, just spokes, this thing, the same thing, there's the GA. Each of those spokes are our working groups. We're creating this. this, this each spoke is a working group. Every now and then we come together yeah, to talk. Each spoke is a spoke. It's an affinity group. The working groups don't necessarily have to consist of people that um, know each other on a daily basis. That's what the spoke, the spoke council is for. I'm sorry I talked about it. I, I understand. We, we're not working with the traditional definition of what a spokes council. I, I understand what a traditional spokes council is. However, Jeremy read a very clear, concise definition of it. I don't think that people. I'm getting the sense that the people in this room aren't interested in operating on that sort of strict definition of what that is. We're interested in playing with that as a model. Um, but using that as a guideline. Yep. I think since GM's spoken the least here, I'd love to hear from GM first. Uh, it's okay. Um, and then I think like Jeremy and myself. Um, so are we so planning on using working groups as the spokes of the spokes council? Is that what is being planned? That's the that's what I'm thinking. I, I have my hand raised to clarify something for Jan since he walked in. Yeah. Is that um, yes, it's it, it is like they said, a loose kind of interpretation of spokes council, but work groups um, like it's very loose, like it's on task forces and affinity groups. And I think that this would lead to strengthening their work groups somewhat. People would see more validity in participating in work groups. I also think it might lead to people forming affinity groups with like, go grab 10 friends and you've got an affinity group for you know, something like that. I think maybe if the terms are tripping us up, then we should just stop using the terms. <laughs> I almost feel like if the point of holding the meeting 
is for everybody to find out what everybody else is doing and to temp check it so that everybody knows how everybody else feels about it. What we're talking about is an announcement session. Just like work group announcements? It's like work group announcements, but it's only work group announcements. <laughs> I mean, essentially, there's, there's maybe some discussion that's involved, but it's just announcements. But the reason, the reason I say that is because it doesn't require any, like, approval. conduct that all the groups can follow, and if there's something that is questionable, we can bring to the spokes council, and the spokes council bring to the individual community groups, spokes, um, working groups, and they come to consensus, and then we can come back together and figure out if that would be a good or bad idea or not. You lost me on that one. Okay. Um, I, lost myself. I think he's proposing that we have a code of conduct to constrain yeah. the un, un, you know, uh, well, Everybody. Your problem is that we don't need the GA camp isn't going to be an approval body for every group that they want. And what I was getting from you is that, that, that you didn't, didn't particularly enjoy that aspect, correct? I just don't, I see it as irrelevant. You see it as irrelevant? The more we're taking actions outside of this building, the less important what we do in this building is. That, that's my point. That's what I've been saying on that. Okay. okay. So if what, we, what the real value of us getting together on a weekly or twice a week, week, week basis is, is for us to share camaraderie and to make sure that we all know what's going on with each other so that if there's something that somebody's doing that we have a problem with, we at least have a vector to let them know. Um, but it doesn't require any approval. It's just, it's discovering consensus rather than formally, like, 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 Turning it out mechanically, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. I understand. Um, so, are you saying it's good that we don't have, um, that there's no way of kind of approving what all the other groups do? Yes. Okay, well, I'm with you there. I <laughs> and and I, I, so, I, when you were talking about a code of conduct, I was kind of like, yeah. Well, um, why have a code when we can check on a on every on a moment on a moment basis whether people like it? Yeah, when we come back into the general meeting, somebody be like, man, I like that. And now let's talk about it. Yeah. And it's just organic. Right. I really love the language of always directing it back to this is not about making decisions or finding approval. It's about finding consensus. And, and consensus, I mean, because consensus does, like, if you don't have approval on one thing, the nature of consensus is that it's somewhere. You can find consensus in something, even if it's that we don't agree with each other. All right, well, we can consensus on that. You know, like, consensus exists no matter what. There's something that you can find consensus on, and you just have to figure out what that thing is. And it can be very loose, is the thing. It cannot be binding. I mean, but there is consensus somewhere. So it's not about decisions. It's not about approval. It's not about being a homogenous unit. It's what can we agree upon, and let's find that. Let's and that's the problem with the process, as I see it, is that the process has to a certain extent, uh, hypnotize us into thinking that building trust among each other is, like the process is more important than building trust, right? The process is an ersatz trust where we say, oh, well, you didn't get this many votes, so therefore I don't have to worry about you know, your concerns or anything like that. You can just steamroll over it. Or, oh, I got the vote, so it doesn't matter if you have a problem with something. Whereas if we had trust with each other before we went into the process, and this was my big problem with like, Chris Dorsey meeting. <coughs> it's impossible to find consensus where we don't trust each other on a fundamental level. On our, you know, and, and I think that having these potlucks or community building exercises is what we've needed for a long time to get to know each other better yep. so that whatever mechanism we put in place works better. It doesn't matter if we don't, you know, like and have a desire to work with each other. Um, just to uh, throw in, one of the reasons why I think GA has been on a downward slope, now, mind you, I was never at Occupy, uh, in, uh, except for to get arrested. I, I showed up twice and hung out and went to two GAs. That was it. Um, 
So that was a time of great community, is what I'm hearing from a lot of people mm -hmm. who were there. Uh -oh. <laughs> like everyone was getting to know each other. There, there were things going on. You didn't necessarily have to have everything approved, but uh, there was a general understanding of let's get something done. It was also a nostalgia thing. Because people now can look back and say, hey, we did that together. Which is almost built more community than the actual two weeks. Okay. Well, while we're after that, was a successful, guys. That uh, was fucking great. Right. Right. Give, give me a second to finish <laughs> out. Uh, there was a point to what I was saying. Alright, so what I'm hearing is, uh, is maybe by doing this uh, as potluck, we're going to get the opportunity to rebuild these connections that have now been somewhat uh, romanticized, it sounds like. Uh, so maybe we're going to get a chance to uh, get these connections that we think are important or have dreamt are important. And maybe by doing that, you're right. We will, in fact, have a stronger decision-making body if we're going to have decisions made. Um, and maybe we'll have a better chance at just trusting each other to, you know, get things going because, hey, I'm hanging out with you, I'm hanging out with you. Oh, uh, you guys want to help me do this? That makes sense to me. Sorry, I've been listening back and forth and for part of it, I, I just didn't understand what the hell is going on with this spokes model scenario because Jeremy was making more sense with, let's just make an announcement. The spokes model thing is still gearing towards let's make a decision versus let's get something done. Or at least that's what it was sounding like in my head. It might not have been what was going on, but my head's a very strange place to begin with. Can I make a suggestion that we figure out where this conversation is ending tonight or where it's going? Whether so that's a time or a goal. Uh, this, this conversation is confusing me, and I feel like we're just sitting here talking in circles right now. Okay, so let's decide what's going on. I have the desire to decide anything tonight, frankly. Yeah, that's fine. That, that's fine. Can we just go back to um, if we want to cancel GA on Thursday and then just do potluck on Sunday and kind of put down a language of the agenda, post it, call people, um, and actually have like something tangible when people come here so that maybe we can't make this decision on Sunday? Yeah. Who likes that? Sunday at 5, potluck, discussion. Uh, and open discussion on, mm. on what, like what we just talked about, like open, open, I, in my mind, what I just heard, or maybe it's just what I'd like to hear, <laughs> or have heard, is an open discussion of, about restructuring and discussing new models for organizing. With the end result of finishing up uh, a new plan. That yeah, I, mean, I don't think it's victory. I think that if, I, the reason I'm saying open discussion about restructuring and ideas for organize, like new models for organizing is because it should just be that. We don't need to like try to force a decision to happen. But if, if there is something that comes out of it, we'll, we'll find it through consensus. Like, like we just aren't doing that. Um, I hate to open up this can of worms, but are we going to be having this discussion here or elsewhere on Sunday? Here. Here. Okay. Yeah, we have here this, we have we're on the calendar till the end of the day. Yeah, my other like, discussion with that format would be is that we 
still open up with like free speech work group announcements and then we have this pop up discussion thing because I think work group announcements are still relevant and important potentially. Um, and maybe just, yeah, general announcements or free speech, whatever you want to call it. Can we also, I mean, I, I definitely agree. I like the idea of not dictating what it would be in terms of allowing for other models to potentially come up in discussion with a larger group and being very open to that idea. I also agree with one of the things you said earlier, Isaac, that we should trust ourselves to kind of know our compatriots in this whole thing relatively well and kind of know what people are wanting to a certain extent. And that's why we're having this discussion now, because it's not just us, it's what we've been hearing as a part of a community. Um, and in some ways, just like encourage by action the language of what, or, and language, like what we, what we think we're needing, but allowing that to continue to evolve with further discussion. So what I mean is, is like we're already doing that by creating a community-focused event where there's a potluck and discussion happening. That's like part of, like, ch we're changing something to create that event, right? That's, that's, a, that's a shift. And then I, Brandon is pushing, we need to have announcements, which is what the Spokes Council model is based on. Model on. So I would say when we talk about what this thing is, let's say, let's encourage people who haven't been here, who are doing cool work, to come make announcements and then have a potluck with us for discussion, and not worry about the fact of this being bogged down as a really formal thing, decision making process. We'd love to see your faces, and this is what we'd like this thing to be. This is kind of the intention for this thing: is announcements and discussion and good food and community. You know, come make your announcements, be here. And, and actually encourage a larger group by at some level kind of offering what we're talking about, even though it's not formalized, and even though we aren't like making a formal change. It's just an offer. The test GA? But not even calling it that. Yes. Yeah. I think that's great. And Sounds it's not even that different. I want to make sure I get the gist of this, and I'm sorry I came in late, so I missed a little bit of the lead lead in. But I understand that what we're going to do is turn GA um, from an organization that focuses on itself to reinforcing people taking action and coming together to see how they're going and make sure that they're within constraints. I think it would be, if, that, if that's true, I'd like to make the suggestion that we all look at the code of conduct and be sure that what we're doing is something we can all get behind. And if we feel we have to stretch the boundaries some, we can maybe give, give Occupy some safe distance from us while we're testing out the waters. Because it, it unnerves me to think that somebody could do something that was maybe a little bit too outlandish. And then we'd all wear that same uh, ID. I can see that didn't register with anybody. <laughs> well, I had to throw it out there. It just seemed like if you say, go out and do something and tell us what it is, it should leave you an awful lot of license, you know. And, and I, I just think it would be good to say, by the way, we do have a code of conduct, and, and although oh, this Occupy is really a movement, not a group per se, it is becoming a group. And to some degree, if I go out and do something outlandish, you all want to disown me. But you, you want to leave yourself some room there to say, well, we didn't say we should be doing that. I mean, anyway, I'm just throwing it out there. Maybe it's something we need to discuss. But I, I think having a code of conduct that was really well understood, and we understood, we, we knew how it unpacked, and, public behavior would be really useful. Like, for instance, we really pissed off that cop at the uh, event at City Council. We're making some slight remarks about him, about the cops who were there. And they, it's not useful. It's just not useful. And stuff like that can cost us. We can cost each other progress in integrating with the community and what resources we have by keeping resources that have positive capabilities as positive as they can be understanding that we have to be able to call people out when they do something odd, but I'm just throwing that out because I don't want us to be hamstringing each other with uh, stretching boundaries that maybe we don't need to uh, put tension on. Um, because you, you missed more than just a bit of the conversation. <laughs> um, the issue is not necessarily that uh, GAs have the, the issue that we started out discussing was that they, these meetings are poorly attended. There's a, there's a 
rough consensus that they don't accomplish relevant things and that they're focused on internal procedural issues or getting endorsements where that endorsement doesn't really mean a lot. And um, what, we're, what we were talking about going to is something that's a little bit more fluid that could allow groups doing work to, to, to a process that makes their, that, that, that accommodates them rather than accommodating everybody that may or may not be doing anything. Make sure they have a voice. Um, as far as the code of conduct goes, this model that we are envisioning, uh, at least that I'm envisioning, I should speak over now, um, would focus more on the people doing the work, and to that extent would focus less on whether or not Occupy is involved in that, right? Occupy would be a platform where they could get people to help them, but it would not be Occupy doing the thing necessarily. Um, that hasn't been clarified much. I mean, I, I don't think we ever like really said that explicitly. That's how I kind of see it. And so the code of conduct becomes less important because there's no approval to be had. Um, I did want to say, I, I think that, the, yeah, I agree with Jeremy, this model like kind of decreases the liability of each group. Uh, on the other end that clearly if there was something extremely outlandish that when you said outlandish yeah I, I, could, I know where you're going with this but I think that was probably me who made the side comments about the police officer um, at city council <laughs> and I know some people agreed with it but some people disagreed with it and um, I think those things could be handled outside of the Spokes Council mostly like I really appreciate if you came up to me and told me like I really thought that on a strategical level Talking about the cops the way you did in front of them was a bad decision. And I respect it, listen to it, and continue on. Um, but clearly, if there's something very outlandish action wise, my understanding of the history of different affinity groups that are action based who have organized themselves this way do, they can come together to denounce an action if that is the mood um, floating in the room. I, I don't foresee it happening, but if it does, it's there. a possibility. Oh, you. You um, it, I feel like it could almost be, instead of Occupy being the center of all those spokes mm -hmm. and being the hub, Occupy could just be one of the spokes. And the hub could, I don't know, because it, it might need to create a working group or two to sustain itself, but it doesn't necessarily have to be Occupy Richmond. It could be something different. And Occupy will probably be one of the strongest spokes on the whole spoke, but it will take it from <coughs> that kind of situation happening. And this is something that I know has floated before in a lot of different groups about changing, like this would lend itself, this model we're talking about, to changing the name of what this thing is that we're doing right now. You know, so this is the General Assembly of Occupy Richmond. I mean, I've heard it said, let's call that the General Assembly of Richmond. You know, mm -hmm. and like, you know, get rid of the Occupy name. Occupy is kind of a touchy name in a lot of parts of the city at this point anyways. Or you call it the Spokes Council, you know, of Richmond, you know, and like, or whatever it is, you know, and, and Occupy is a part of that, um, but it's not necessarily what <coughs> it is itself. Like, Occupy is not the Spokes Council itself, necessarily. I envision the Spokes Council of Richmond activists. That's that's what I think would be the most beautiful and effective force in our city. Art. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> no, wait, that's wrong. Bob, I An think activist you... in Richmond would be inspired. So, like, if you're taking action, you don't use Occupy's name? Yes. Unless you're in the Occupy book, I guess. Yeah, we, which is a group designed for a particular direct action of occupation, as I see it. Like, that's what they're, that's what they need. Slash, they have a nice, <coughs> you know, person Facebook page that they're both on. <laughs> we'll see I don't, I don't understand. I mean, like, if you got a group of people from Occupy together, say, to collect, a, collect trash on a certain street or in a certain neighborhood, that's not under the name of Occupy, it has to be something, something else.
some other name? I think that we're, you're, we're probably making this more complicated than it needs to be. The most important thing is that you're doing the action. It doesn't matter what the name is. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's, that's kind of the spirit that I want to inculcate here more, is that the action is what matters. Not, not the brand associated with it. And um, I think what we're talking about right now is just what is the easiest way to refer to this new idea that we're coming up with. So I, I, I acknowledge that it can be a little confusing because you can use an occupier to refer to us. Now we're proposing using some other word to refer to us. People. <laughs> can we just call ourselves the human race of Richmond and, you know, <laughs> really mess with people? That would be really confusing. Okay, we can be the um, product <laughs> a race of. Yeah. We can be the product of the evolution. <laughs> I have the domain Radical Richmond that I've used for a few projects. I don't know if you guys consider yourself radical. I don't know. I don't think you can race this a lot of people. Are you saying that there's people aren't humans? Yeah. I'm saying, you know, we're moving away from Occupy. Cross section of the human race, nonetheless. Uh, no, that's we're primarily white people. Primary part of the human race. Mm. <laughs> 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 How it is, it's not a matter of opinion or anything. Like, you can give me statistics of the human race. We are. Yeah, I'll back you. Yeah, we'll be about identity, man. I'd like to move to close the meeting. Second. Second. Third is there? Okay. It is done. Okay, Lee, fine. <laughs> if, if this thing's over, I'm if, this, if this is done, I'm leaving. <laughs> the Bainbridge House, we are going to be trying to rewrite the Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death speech for a march on the 23rd of March. So, I, I had gotten it approved. I'm working towards this thing. As many people can, please come. If you got to go somewhere else, go somewhere else. There's a lot of this. Uh, I have an announcement as well. Mike Chet! Mike Chet! Can I just make an announcement? I'm sorry. Uh, because my wife asked me to announce that the Richmond Craft Mafia is putting on a craft swap where you can uh, bring a bag and like take home a bunch of like surplus craft materials. Um, I have flyers here if you're interested. And the gardening group has seed bonds. Take. 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 And there's an info sheet on the front if you want to grab instructions on how to bomb. I'd like to make the, base, the basics are grab some and the unibomb them and empty lots. Preferably All right, real quick. Sooner. Isaac, the unibomber. I'm moving up. There will be no facilitation meeting this week unless one of you plan one. <laughs> and okay, we'll do I am not a sheriff. <laughs> I'm so, just prepared for really cold, sunny weather. Okay. So, I think, just to check, I think we all have consensus that from here we're going to get somehow posted to the Facebook and the stuff. And we are going to collectively advertise to everyone we know who are part of this transforming organization that there will be no GA on Thursday and there will be a meeting on Sunday where we will announce things to each other. Eat food and have general discussion about reformatting the way we gather and, and, and organize ourselves. And that we really would love everyone to be there because it's going to be hot. Two G's. Two G's. Two G's. I think we need to make a point of Clive inviting all Richmond activists. Yeah, not, not just long. Not, not just Occupy. Like, or not just people who still identify themselves with that word. Well, because does that mean Chris Dorsey? The most important thing is that <laughs> the people who are still using that word and coming and being patient with all the bullshit, like, are 
active. It's like everybody here is one. Like we are all trying to stay active. And there's a lot of other people who are active. Um, Occupy is just people occupying a park. Right. So, so what I would say is that, Sorry. like, based on the model of what we're yeah. talking about, I'm like, you should do that because you want to, and because it's a good idea. Everybody who thinks that's a good idea should do that. Huh? But also just noting that, like, technically we haven't, as a as an Occupy GA, haven't changed things right. know, super dramatic. Uh, what I'm almost trying to say is that, like, let's just have some awareness. That if we like just start inviting other people and stop referring to it as a GA and do all this stuff, like what that means, we're like a set, we're essentially like entirely changing everything without consensus, without gathering people, without a discussion. We are like just changing things, which I'm personally fine with. We're changing things for next week. From what I understand, it, it's only for next Sunday. We haven't made a permanent change yet, so let's keep that in mind. Okay, cool. And a potluck that's just what? Everybody brings a dish? Uh, yeah. Somebody share with the dishes and utensils. Sure, sure. really I bring a uh, cornbread and yeah, I suggest that we have a side up sheet on. Bring a bowl. Bring your own bowl. That's actually weird though. Bring your own food. Does this mean that I can have to participate in the 29th February action? Yeah, I want to.